another one that I prepared was this mold, the Holy Heart. And I got it in three sizes, probably large, medium, and small. I gave away one of the, no, I'm not seeing them. One of the hearts, hang on, let me show you. Here they are. I made quite a few of these hearts and I gave one to one I know and her first thought was to turn it into a necklace. And I, I don't think you could do that. I think they're too big, but it did inspire me to look for one that you could turn into a necklace. So I'm gonna to try to recreate this type of heart in the necklace. The first step to make these hearts is to create a flat base. So you clip out a piece of glass, Tecta, that is going to be able to lay flat. And you sometimes have to just trim and place and trim and place because you need that nice flat base. And so for each of these, they're gonna get a nice flat base that I'm gonna rest the flowers on. See, that one is not working, so I need to trim off these corners. And I'm saving all the little bits of Tecta that I trim off because I'm gonna use them to fill around this flat base. It's gotta be as flat as you can get it because the flowers have to have something to rest on. Otherwise, they're just gonna slide around. And you don't want that. This one looks a little bit too small. So I just have to play a little bit until I can get the right size and the right fill so that I have a really nice flat area. These are pretty tiny so I went through and found some of the smallest flowers that I have and I'm going to decorate with these so we uh, definitely glue them in place the tiniest little bit of glass tack so that they do not slide around when you're putting the fill for um tecta frit in there so I can go with a slightly larger for this slightly larger and then the teeny tiny ones are going to, to be in these much smaller hearts. So you just need to arrange them. I like doing odd numbers, so I usually will do three or five. After I get the flowers set in place, I'm going to go back and I'm going to find pieces of this stringer that make good stems. I like it to be curved. Sometimes it's difficult when it's so tiny to get a curve in there. You just don't have enough length. Even if the glass is curved, sometimes the pieces you break out look really straight if they're too tiny. But the curves are really nice if you can get a curve in there. I'm going to work keeping in mind that this will be the top and it's going to work down toward the point of the heart. So you want to have all your stems following that line. And you want to throw some leaves in there. I use the same stringers for stems and leaves when it's so tiny. When I'm making something much larger, I can pull one of the ends of the stringers. They have beautiful wider parts that I use for leaves, but <clears throat> not something this tiny. This tiny you just need to stick with. The little pieces. And we want to maintain that line because it's going to hang from there. So it's going to hang sort of looking like that. I want to get some leaves in there. I 
I find with these, if you stay simple, you're really better off. If you put too much in there, it gets a little bit too cluttered, a little bit too messy. I will put a little bit of frit down at the bottom so that it looks like it's in a base of grass and not just floating in the middle of the air. Once you've got them the way you want them, you need to take another look to make sure that when it's hanging, it's going to be an attractive layout. This one is too little too horizontal, so I have to tip it a little bit more. This one is good. But that's going to hang like that, and so you see it's, it's not going to work. So all these flowers have to be tipped up that way, even though the point is way over here, you have to think of the area it's going to hang from. So you just have to twist everything so that when it's hanging, the flowers can have a sweeping, but they can't look crooked. And this one I think is gonna be the one that's gonna look the most crooked, just the way the mold was built. And I want it to sweep more from left to right. So I need all my stems to go the other way, except for this one leaf. It can go up. Any green that's too high needs to be removed. And that's the final step, making sure that you have, well, it's not the final step. That's the step where you have to make sure everything is going to look right when the necklace is hanging. And then the final step is you're going to fill in with these little pieces of clear frit, the uh, Tecta frit. And you're going to fill carefully around because you don't want any of these pieces to shift as it's firing. When it warms up and starts to melt, you want everything to stay in place. So you're going to carefully pack Tecta frit around everything and then pile the frit on top. I'm not really sure this is the right mold for me because I want this type of heart and some of them the way them the way that they're gonna hang I don't know I don't know how it's gonna look if I used it to do this type of scrap or this type of scrap or a solid color heart which I don't have any of right now I think it would turn out much better we'll see when it's done. I may or may not use it for that type of work because these I really love but uh, I, I'm not sure how it's going to work with that mold. Okay the heart molds are in the Paragon kiln and I'll give you a look when they come out. Ooh, those look so pretty. Ooh, these turned out lovely. Still not sure I like the way they hang. They're a really good size. At least the three smaller ones. 
that's a little bit big. 